Fuzzy Gamer here with the Dungeon of Dragons 5th Edition Power Build. Have you ever wanted your character to not die ever? To be able to shrug off damage and walk out of a war zone unscathed, feeling like nothing can truly take you down? Well, now you can. And I know what you might be thinking. Wow, this is going to be another healing build that just abuses good berries and healing spirit. And if you're in the spirit, feel free to click the subscribe button for more builds and gaming content and hit the like button just to help support this build. And let me know what you think in the comments down below. This build has maximized its effective health points and preemptive survival and not just by being able to heal off injuries after combat. All right, so what do we need to make this build work exactly? We need enough HP to make taking down our character a daunting task while being able to take the brunt of the damage for our allies while we fight on the front line. Then we need a source of extra HP to inflate our bulk and mitigate incoming damage from our character's health pool to prevent getting down. Since we'll be on the front lines getting attacked often, then we're going to need a way to lower the damage we are receiving to make attacks seem pointless. And finally, we need the ability to regenerate any amount of our health pool that does get depleted to make it enemies question the usefulness of their efforts. First off, our wraiths we'll be choosing will be Hill Dwarf, giving us a plus two to constitution and a plus one to wisdom. And our racial features give us some beefy benefits to our bolt by gaining an additional health point on every level up while having resistance and advantage on poisons and poison damage. And with our race stat modifiers, here's what our stats will look like point by. Now, if you are rolling for stats, just remember to keep strength, dexterity, wisdom, and charisma all above 13 for multi-class while trying to keep constitution as high as possible. Our stats will be 13 strength, 13 dexterity, 16 constitution, 8 intelligence, 13 wisdom, and 13 charisma. This is going to give us a total of 220 24 HP at level 20 and 18 AC by wearing half plate and a shield. Our ability score increases that we'll be getting will be put into constitution until it is at 20. And then for a feat, we want to choose the tough feat, which is going to make it so our character gains an additional two health points on each level up, raising our max HP to about 264. Now for the class levels. We have two levels in paladin, three levels in barbarian, five levels in rogue, and 10 levels in druid. Our starting class is going to be barbarian, giving us proficiencies in strength and constitution saving throws. And it will also allow us to wear half plate armor and use shields for 18 AC. Now the class feature that we'll be interested in will be rage, which is a bonus action that allows us to take half damage from physical damage sources. And at level 3 we are choosing the totem warrior subclass for the subclass feature totem spirit, which allows us to modify our rage feature by adding effects from our spirit animal. And that will be the bear totem which allows us to take half damage from all sources, including magical, except for psychic damage. Our next class will be two levels in Paladin. This is to give us access to the Lay on Hands class feature, which will allow us to use our action to heal an amount of points equal to five times the levels in Paladin. So in this case, we'll be able to heal 10 HP. In addition, we get a fighting style of our choice, which will be the defense fighting style for an additional plus one to our AC, bring us up to 19. And the next class will be five levels in row, giving us access access to the uncanny dodged class feature, allowing us to use our reaction to take half damage from any attack that uses an attack roll against our character. And the final class is 10 levels in Druid, which gives us access to the wild shape class feature, allowing us to shapeshift into a myriad of different creatures and to use their HP as a form of temporary health points. And at level 2, we'll be choosing the Circle of the Moon subclass for the subclass features Combat Wild Shape and Elemental Wild Shape. Combat Wild Shape allows us to shape shift as an action or as a bonus action, and while transformed into another creature, we can trade our spell slots to heal ourselves an average of 4.5 health points per level of the spell slot, or an average of 27 health with a 6 level spell slot. While Elemental Wild Shape allows us to use our Wild Shape to turn into an Earth, Air, Fire, or Water Elemental, and for this build, we'll be choosing the Earth Elemental for their immense 126 health points and respectable 17 AC. And with the build out of the way, here's what it does. First, our damage reduction with 
with the Bear Totem Barbarian's Rage and the Rogue's Uncanny Dodge features gives us 4 times more survivability against attack. And with this damage reduction, our chunky 264 health points effectively become a whopping 1056 during combat. And this is more HP than even the Taras, which has 676. Meanwhile, if we transform into an Earth Elemental with the Druid's Wild Shape, this will provide an additional 540 four effective health points, which is usable twice for 1,008 extra health, and that's not all. In this form, we can trade spell slots to be able to regenerate our missing health at a rate of 44 effective health points on average each turn for a total of roughly 738 HP over the course of 15 turns. And then, we even have a burst heal. If we reserve the 6 level spell slot to be used alongside Lay on Hands, which gives us an additional average of 140. 48 effective healing. So, bringing everything together, that's 1056 base health plus 1008 wild shape HP plus 886 health from healing. We get a total of 2950 effective health, which is more than four to Rass. And then, with maximum healing, the build can achieve 3464 HP, which is more than five to Rasks and it's absolutely ridiculous. Anyways, I hope you guys all enjoyed this build, and if there are any builds you would like to see in future videos, let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more character builds and gaming content. Quasi Gamo, out.